Coming up on the Books, Blogs, and Business Podcast show, Jewel will dive deeper into creating a strategy for your book marketing using the trifecta of book marketing. Later on, she will feature the debut books for March. But first up, let's listen in to her movie recommendation of the month. All this and more on the Books, Blogs, and Business Podcast show. Welcome back to the Books, Blogs, and Business Podcast show. I'm your host, Joanna Cole, and I'm super, super excited to be here as always. We have an amazing show in store for you. But first off, I really want to talk about a movie that I watched this week. I swear to God, I saw the movie. I saw it at, I think it was like 7.5 star rating or something like that, 7.1 or 7.5. And for me, once a movie is in the 7s or it's in the 8s, I'm going to watch it. Sometimes I watch movies in the 5s, okay, when I don't got nothing else to do. But a movie in the 7s or in the 8s, I'm really intrigued. And the thing about it is that it was like romance, drama, and thriller. And I really love a good rum thriller. Like, I just love a good thrill with a little sprinkle of romance involved in it. And so that's what this movie was all about. And now, the title of the movie was Sharper. Now, I had no idea what it meant or anything. It looks so interesting because the cover of the movie the name and then what the movie genre was about everything just seemed you know like okay i want to know a little bit more about this because i don't really understand what was going on they had some really interesting actors in it as well too and i really thoroughly enjoyed it honestly this show made full circle it started off really cool and you could just see that something was going to happen. You just knew that something was going to happen pretty soon and something did happen. And then it sort of like jumped to each person's point of view. So each person's perspective on, you know, what's going on in life and everything literally made full circle. Like I had to pause and breathe and just take a moment to really understand what was going on. For me, this kind of movie or these kind of movies are ones where I love that you can watch them over and over and over and over to get the clues. Like every time you watch this movie, you will be able to get new clues to really understand what was going on. So, you know, in have some movies that you just cannot just watch once. You have to watch it a few times. And so I think Sharper is one of those. I probably would watch it again. But honestly, it made full circle. It did have a really happy ending. And I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So that is my movie recommendation for this month. We became writers because more than anything, we wanted to share our stories with the world. But the reality is becoming a successful author requires more than brainstorming, outlining and editing. We realized that without an audience, our books would never reach our readers' hands. So we have to take action. I'm Joe Nicole, and I'm on a mission to help you get your books visible and into readers' hands. To do that, we need to work together. You need to continue to write your story, and I will provide you with the strategies and resources you need to become the success you were meant to be. This episode is brought to you by the Target Reader Mini Course. Get 20% off your purchase, identify your perfect readers for your book, and put yourself on the path to writing success in as little as 30 minutes a week. You can grab your mini course at jewelspaces.com forward slash mini course. So today we are talking about something that I love calling the trifecta of book marketing. It's the three things that make up a solid book marketing strategy. And that would be defining who your ideal readers are, building an author website, and of course, having an author mailing list. Let's start with your ideal readers. I'm gonna share with you one of the strategies that I actually have in my mini course. So to do that, in order to find your ideal readers, what I need you to do is three things. You must identify the genre that you're writing in, you must analyze your novel, and then you must compare your novel with others in your particular genre. So let's begin by identifying your genre. What are you writing? There are common genres that everyone knows about, everyone writes in them. You have your romance genre, you have your fantasy genre, you have your mystery genre, you even have your sci-fi genre. And so these are the common genres that persons write in. 
However, for you to have a deeper understanding of who your ID readers are, you need to get really specific on what category your book really falls into. So you need to get really, really specific. What you need to do is write this down. Of course, you know what your genre is. Write it down so that you have an idea of who exactly you're trying to attract to your book. Once you've done this, you want to move on to the next step, which is to use two or three words to describe your genre. So for instance, historical romance or mystery thriller suspense. This helps you to get really specific on who your audience is and who you're trying to target. Honestly, when you think about it, for instance, I like reading romance, but I'm not a historical romance fan. So when you get specific on what type of romance you write, you're able to figure out what type of readers are going to be attracted to your book. So I don't like historical romance, but I love romance comedy. Anything with comedy in it, anything to make me laugh with a romantic element, that's my jam. So you need to know who your ID readers are. Another thing too, I am someone who is really into mystery, thriller, suspense, that's my thing, but I don't like horror. Horror is a type of thriller and there's a lot of suspense in it, but I'm not a horror person. So you need to get to understand exactly who your readers are. Who are the ones that are going to be interested in this particular genre? And to do that, you have to use two or three words to describe the genre that you are writing in. And the third thing that I want you to do is if you are writing for a particular age group, then you can include that in your findings or include in your research. So for instance, a lot of persons write YA. So if you do YA mystery or YA suspense, or if you do NA, which is new adult, for instance, do NA, you may be someone who writes children's books or just pure adult fiction. You want to make sure that if the particular age gap or age group is included in your genre, then that is something that you should also to be thinking about. After you've done this, the next thing that you need to do is analyze your novel. Now, you can do that by listing keywords that are associated with your genre and asking yourself a few questions. The keywords that are associated with your genre would be words that you use to describe the genre that you write in or words that writers use in their books or even words that readers would typically search when they are looking for a particular book to read. Tropes are also considered keywords because they actually describe the genre that you're in. For instance, if you are a romance writer, um, some of the tropes in the romance genre would be things like a bad boy romance or billionaire romance or second chance romance. Those are tropes which are actually keywords that when persons type into Google they are looking for bad boy romances for 2023 or 2022, those keywords come up and a list of books come under that keyword. So you need to know what tropes are in your genre, but you also too need to know your keywords for the book that you are writing. These keywords give explanation. So persons know what to expect from your book. If they know that you are writing a romance and it's a billionaire romance, they know exactly, okay, somebody's gonna be a billionaire. Most likely it's the man, but it'd be cool if the woman is a billionaire. Just saying. But they know what to expect. When they see second chance romance, they know what to expect. They know that this is a second chance at love. When they see first love, they know what to expect. So these keywords and these tropes allow your readers to know what exactly to expect in your novel. And so you need to do your research. You can Google tropes in your genre and you can get a list of keywords. For instance, if you Google romance tropes, they will give you hundreds of tropes in the romance genre only. So imagine for the other genres that are being written. What I want you to do is to sit down, forge out a list of 10 to 20 keywords that you can use to describe the book that you're writing, that you can use to describe the genre that you write in, and that will help you to classify easily exactly where your book lies in the market. 
Now, when you've done this, the second part of the B part to this exercise would be for you to ask yourself a few questions. You want to jot down exactly where your novel is taking place. You want to jot down what is the setting of your book, what era or time period your novel takes place in, what's the ultimate goal of your novel, and exactly who can relate to the characters in your book. When you've done this, you've written down these questions and you've actually answered these questions, it's going to help you to get a little bit closer to knowing who your ID readers are and also to, to help you with your book marketing strategy. Once you've done this, we can move on to the next topic, which is comparing your novel with other novels in your genre. Okay, so we're going to do a little shopping, but more like a little window book shopping. So basically, if you're going to head across to like Amazon or you can even use Goodreads as well too. But what you want to do is find 10 books in your genre that your readers enjoy. These can be books that you enjoy as well too. So remember when you are writing in a particular genre, most likely writers are supposed to write in the genre that they love to read in because an avid reader is a great writer. So make sure that whatever genre that you're writing in, you're very familiar with the genre because you read in it as well. And so I want you to head across to Amazon or to Goodreads and I want you to find 10 books in that genre that you enjoy or that your readers have enjoyed. Now, on these sites, there are many reviews. This is gonna help you to determine what your readers really enjoyed about that book. When you found these books, ask yourself just a few questions. We just got a few questions here. First of all, why did the readers like this book? According to the reviews, what is one thing that stood out for the readers? The next thing that you want to ask yourself is, what do the reviews on Amazon and Goodreads look like? So are they one star reviews or are they five star reviews or are they 4.5 star reviews? What do they look like? Let's go again. What are some of the similar tropes in these books? So you want to pick out one or two common tropes that each book contains. So out of your 10 books, look to see what common tropes each book contains. Make sure you jot down the similarities of that as well. And then of course, you want to ask yourself, where do readers find these stories? So are they on Amazon or are they just on Amazon? Or do they directly go to the author's website? Or do they go to the bookstore? Do they buy them in the bookstore? So where exactly do your readers find these stories? Now, all this information, the answers to these questions, is very useful because it's going to help you to understand the best approach to take when you're promoting your book. You know exactly what tropes that your readers like to read. You will know why they like certain books in your genre above other books. You'll know where exactly readers are going to find your book, so you know exactly where to put your book, as well as also to you know if your book could receive four or five star reviews. So just by doing this simple exercise, you are able to figure out a lot about your book marketing strategy. And honestly, for me, there are some persons in the thriller, the mystery thriller genre that I do not like reading. They are not my cup of tea. I believe that their writing is, their, their pacing is slow. And I am someone who loves action. It's a page turner. You must be able to have action on every page. I must be off my seat. So when you ask yourself these questions, you're able to determine what is a person going to like about your book? Why are they going to choose your book over another author's book? Or why are they going to choose your book and the other author's book? So these questions allow you to determine that. Now with this same strategy, I implemented it and I was able to get over 50,000 readers on a particular book that I wrote about, I think it was like two, three years ago. And I am still amazed by the amount of feedback that I get till this day from that certain book. And it's all because of doing what I did, asking myself these questions, putting into place this book marketing strategy. So as I mentioned before, this, what I shared with you, this first part of the segment, 
basically is part of my mini course. I go even into more detail with this, as well as sharing with four other strategies that I have personally used that has helped me to grow my platform. So if you're interested in that, please head across to jewishpatience.com forward slash mini course. You can sign up today and you'll be able to start the course one time. So you don't have to wait for anything. The course is already there. It's all self-paced. You can take your time and do it and you will be able to have a foundation just like I do and you can have potential 50,000 readers on your book. So head across to jewishpatience.com forward slash mini course and sign up today. Okay, so now we're moving on to the second thing that I did when it came to creating my book marketing strategy and that would be building my author website. Now, I love designing websites. I love putting everything together and the colors and the mood and all the ideas that come from my mind when I'm building my site. What I especially love to is that if you can't afford to have a paid author website, there are other things that you can do in order for you to make sure that you have your website. Having a website is one of the most important things in the trifecta of book marketing because it's where everyone goes to get to know more about you. You want to direct attention to your website. And so a while back on this show, I did have Tiffany who talked about building websites. She has a one page website that she builds, which is very interesting where you can have all your information on this one page. Now, basically, if you cannot afford to build a professional website, what can you do in the meantime? I would say have a landing page. Let persons know that you are serious about what you're doing. Let persons know that you have a book coming out by having a landing page. Now, this landing page or this one page website would contain just a few things. First of all, your book. It's coming soon. Now, you don't need to put up a picture of your book. You can literally have like a blank mock-up of the book, especially if you want to do a cover reveal. You don't need to include a picture of your book. You can put your title if you know what your title is or what the working title of your book is. You can have a brief description of what you want the book to be. And then you can also to have a button below that to persons to click and so that they can actually join your newsletter or your email list to get more updates on your book. You can then have your about you section, which is usually about you and how you can benefit those that come to your site. So how you can benefit your readers, what you write, what you do, why you write what you do, and things like that. Really allowing that person to be able to be drawn into you. And if you want, again, you can put a link to your newsletter or your email list so that persons could sign up to get to know more about you. The next thing that you can add to this one page website would be contact information. Now, this is especially good, especially when you're a new writer. Persons can get in contact with you through your email, through your social media accounts. And then too, if you have people who are looking out to feature new authors, there are always persons on the lookout for new authors. There's always agents, literary agents looking out for new authors. And so this allows them to get in contact with you. So make sure you have your contact information on your site. Make sure it's updated and make sure that you're frequently checking your emails to see if persons are getting in contact with you. And then finally, I would say have a section for your newsletter direct out call to action telling persons hey join my newsletter this is what i do on my newsletter this is what you receive on my newsletter or this is what you get this is how frequent you get my newsletter let persons know that you have a newsletter if you don't have a newsletter then i suggest you get a newsletter and i do have an entire episode a few episodes on how to go about getting your newsletter up and running so i will link those in the show notes but of course Put a direct call to action on your site so that persons can sign up for your email list. Now, that takes us straight into the other topic, which is email list building. But before we dive into that, I do want to share with you the new books that are coming out for March. This episode is brought to you by Meet Your Milestones. It's my principal author planner store that specializes in author writing planners. 
Uh, mostly misunderstand is our signature planner that is a genre specific novel planner. As writers, we've got lots of notes while planning and editing our drafts. With the genre specific planner, you can keep all your notes in one place. From brainstorming to publishing and marketing, the genre specific planner has a section for every stage in writing and publishing. Visit meet your milestones at jewelpages.com forward slash shop to browse in the wide selection. This is new releases for March in 2023 by category fiction. Hello, beautiful by Anne Napolitano. What happened to Ruthie Ramirez by Claire Jimenez. Burnham Wood by Eleanor Carton. Sea Change by Gina Chung. And Pineapple Street by Jenny Jackson. In the nonfiction category, Who Gets Believed When the Truth Isn't Enough by Dina Nayeri. Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. We Were Once a Family, A Story of Love, Death, and Child Removal in America by Roxana Asgardian. Saving Time, Discovering a Life Beyond the Clock by Jenny O'Dell. STFU, The Power of Keeping Your Mouth Shut in an Endlessly Noisy World by Dan Lyons. In the Young Adult section, Missing Clarissa, by Ripley Jones. Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. Chaos and Flame by Tessa Grayton and Justina Ireland. The Renaissance of Gwen Hathaway by Ashley Shumisha. Stars and Smoke by Marie Lou. In the Children's section, Iceberg by Jennifer A. Nielsen. Hamra and the Jungle of Memories by Hannah Alcaf. My Friend Looney by Nina Lacord and Ashling Lindsay, the illustrator. A Bit of Earth by Karuna Briazi. What Stays Buried by Suzanne Young. On to the Mystery Thriller category. What Have We Done by Alex Finley. Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutano. The London Science Society by Sarah Penner. All That Is Mine I Carry With Me by William Landy. The Kind Word Saving by Peter Swanson. In the Romance category, we have The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. Off the Map by Trish Dollar. Infamous by Lex Crusher. Something Wild and Wonderful by Anita Kelly. In the science fiction category, we have Flux by Jin Wu Chong. Animator Blues by Edward Ashton. The Mimicking of Known Successes by Halka Older. The New One by Evie Green. Loki's Ring by Stina Light. In the category of fantasy, we have The Foxgove King by Hannah Witten. Dead Country by Max Gladstone. The Lies of the Ajungo by Moses Ose Utumai. The God of Endings by Jacqueline Holland. The Fateless by C.L. Clark. In our historical fiction category, we have Wayward by Amelia Hart. Beyond That, The Sea by Laura Spence Ash. Hang the Moon by Jeanette Walls. The Perfumist of Paris by Alka Joshi. And Dust Child by Nguyen Phan Ki Mai. This wraps up the news releases for March. Back to the episode. So let's dive a little bit into your email list. Have you been talking about your book? Do you have a social media presence? Has persons showed interest in your book or in your upcoming book? Then what are you doing? You need to ask them for their email. That's what you need to do. You need to be just outright and just bold with it. Let persons know, hey, if you are interested in my book, if you're interested in more of what I am publishing or more of what I have to say, give me your email address and I will send you frequent emails 
on this particular topic or on whatever topic that you are talking about. You want to make sure you're asking for emails. Just let persons know that you need their emails. When you get persons emails, I want you to create a tag in your email marketing platform where it's a tag for just persons who are interested in your book. They're probably interested in reading it when it comes out or they're probably interested in buying it. They're probably interested in becoming your arc readers and things like that. So you create a tag for those persons in your email marketing platform so that you don't mix them up with the other persons in your newsletter or in the other workflows that you have. Now, I want you to send frequent emails. This is something that I do on a weekly basis. I send out two emails a week. I send out my Monday newsletter. This is something I have recently started. And then I send out my podcast email on Tuesday when my podcast goes live. So you want to send out frequent emails so that persons don't forget who you are because Trust me when I say a person's inbox is pretty full. If you go check your inbox right now, you would see how much emails you have. I bet it's thousands. I have thousands of emails in my inbox. And so it's so easy for persons to forget exactly who you are, especially if you're not sending frequent emails. So you need to at least email these people once a week. Now, you want to send emails that are surrounding your particular genre, your particular book, whatever works in progress that you have going on. You also to want to not just stick with the writing and reading niche. I want you to branch out. I want you to share memes and relatable jokes. This is something that I recently started doing as well too. I want you to share relatable content because persons open their emails and a lot of times they get things that are sold to them and things like that to be a refreshing thing for your readers to get memes and jokes and to just have this fun, fresh, lighthearted day. And so that's what I want you to do. Really sit down and think about what it is your readers want, what they would enjoy getting from you and put that into motion. Include that in your frequent email sending schedule. When you send emails frequently, what it does is that it builds this no like trust factor with your readers, especially when you are not sending them anything about buying any of your books, especially if you're a new writer and you haven't written or published a book as yet, you can send other things. This is going to build this trust factor with them. And so that when you do have a book coming out or you, your book finally is being launched and being released, persons usually are interested in you. They are down with whatever it is that you have to offer. And so they are more likely to support you in whatever way they can when it comes to supporting the release of your book. So by me doing this, and I did share how I added an additional 100 persons to my subscriber list. So that's another podcast episode that I had in the past. I'll link that in the show notes as well too. But this helps you to grow your email list. Make sure that your list and the things that you're sharing are relatable, but then also to are shareable. Make sure persons can talk about them with their friends and get their friends to sign up to your email list. These are the things that build that trust factor that's going to help you in the long run with your book marketing strategy. So Camp NaNoWriMo is one month away and I'm excited. With Camp NaNoWriMo, you can start a new project, you can set your own goals, or you can join a writing group. This year, I think I may start a new project. I'm not too sure. We'll see. I would like to, but then I should probably edit the last project I did. So I'm back and forth on that, limping on two opinions, but we'll see how that goes. If you are looking for a writing partner, then join my Facebook group. I just simply head across to jewetspages.com forward slash Facebook group and you can join a Facebook group to get a writing partner. For all you know, you can have me as your writing partner. I am pretty excited about this year and the writing schedules and goals and all these stories that are going to be coming out this year. I'm really, really excited about it and I can't wait to read your story. So thank you so much for giving me some of your time. I really, really do appreciate it. And until next time, keep writing. 
You are listening to the Books, Blogs and Business podcast show with Jew and Nicole. All resources mentioned in this podcast can be found in the show notes of this episode. Share this episode with your favorite social media platform and tag me. By doing so, you will help many of your other fellow writers to learn how they can get their books visible and into readers' hands. And one more thing, head across to your favorite podcast player and leave Books, Blogs and Business a review so that I can know how much you really love the show. I'm Joe Nicole and until next week, keep writing!